Hello and welcome to the last edition of Aggie News for the 2023 fall semester. I'm Kayla Hare. And I'm Mercy Secor, filling in in the absence of Deja Garner. Today we start with some breaking news. Henry Kissinger, a former U.S. Secretary of State and National Security Advisor who escaped Nazi Germany in his youth to become one of the most influential and controversial foreign policy figures in American history, has died at the age of 100. Kissinger died Wednesday at his home in Connecticut, according to a statement from his consulting firm, Kissinger Associates. The firm did not provide a cause of death. After becoming a naturalized citizen in 1943, then serving in World War II, he later earned his doctorate at Harvard University, where he would go on to teach yet the importance of public service brought him to government work. Kissinger is survived by his wife Nancy, two children, and five grandchildren. Former President George W. Bush made a statement in regards to his relationship with Kissinger stating, quote, I have long admired the man who fled the Nazis as a young boy from a Jewish family, then fought them in the United States Army. When he later became Secretary of State, his appointment as a former refugee said as much about his greatness as it did America's greatness, end quote. Bush went on to also say, quote, Kissinger worked in the administrations of two presidents and counseled many more. I am grateful for that service and advice, but I am most grateful for his friendship, end quote. Secretary Kissinger really set the standard for everyone who followed uh, in, um, in this job. I was very privileged to uh, get his counsel uh, many times, including as recently as uh, about a month ago. Uh, he was extraordinarily generous uh, with his wisdom, with his advice. His story and legacy really made an impact on those around him and those to follow his footsteps. After a two-day demonstration, school nutrition workers in Guilford County ended a walkout for a pay raise and better working conditions. Reporter Deja Williams has the update. We would rather be in our kitchen serving our children today like we do every day. But they aren't. We need to respect. Just respect us. That's all we ask it. On Monday, 200 nutrition staff members started picketing and pushing for higher wages. Right now, cafeteria assistants make around $15 to an hour, while assistant managers make $16 to $17, leaving managers to make around $18 an hour. We have negotiated a 4% increase for our assistants, which are our cooks, our cashiers, and our servers, but we are still negotiating on manager pay. Employees negotiated that the pay rate for managers be increased to $20 an hour. They also requested that the STEPS program be brought back, which will give raises to staff members who have worked longer. Men and women are working up to two and three jobs just to keep fighting. Last year, um, it was only three of us in the kitchen and I did go to work we're walking pneumonia for two months um, to make sure that those kids were fed. So it's not that we're out here not doing it for the kids because we are. And as of Wednesday, the nutrition workers have returned to work. After two hour long negotiations on Monday evening in a town hall at Hairston Middle School Tuesday night, Greensboro leaders said they plan to keep the 4% pay increase for school nutrition assistants and a 4 to 7% increase for nutrition managers. This is Deja Williams, Aggie News. Let's talk about some legacy and impact. Yesterday, November 29th, profound journalist Roland Martin visited a ts campus as a part of the NBCU Masterclass Series. This visit was to provide students with knowledge that, were, that would prepare students for their future journalism careers. Follow us on Instagram at NCAT Student News and turn on your post notifications to be notified when this story is posted. Congratulations, Senior Aggies. It's almost that time. Fall commencement will take place December 16th. Seniors graduating in the spring should have received an email from the Office of Leadership and Civic Engagement asking you to fill out a spring commencement survey. According to the office, the service allows you the survey allows you to identify commencement speakers, ceremony traditions, and activities. So be sure to check your email. It is critical in advocating on your behalf. The Blue and Gold Marching Machine will be making their way back to the Dome in Atlanta, Georgia, Friday, December 15th at the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. 
The BGMM will be participating in the inaugural Band of the Year National Championship hosted by ESPN Events. Aggies, it is time to encourage and support our Division I marching machine as they compete for the title as number one band of the year. To purchase tickets or find out other ways to show your support, visit www.bandoftheyear.com. Congratulations to the Blue and Gold Marching Machine. Also, speaking of this high-stepping machine, the parade season is right around the corner. The Blue and Gold Marching Machine will begin with the Mevin Christmas Parade in Mevin, North Carolina on December 1st at 7 p.m. Then, they'll bring it right back home to Greensboro at the Greensboro Christmas Parade on December 2nd at 12 p.m. A&T's very own Paul Robeson Theater presents The Soul of Christmas. This family holiday extravaganza musical will be showing November 30th through December 3rd. Student tickets are free through the student ticketing online. Find all show times and more ticketing information on Instagram at NCAT Theater. Well, it looks like this weekend is full of festive events. The holiday classic This Christmas is coming to you this Friday, December 1st, right in Dees Ballroom, presented by the Student University Activities Board. The doors of festivities will open at 5.30 p.m., so grab some light refreshments as you wait for the holiday classic. This Christmas is to premiere at 6 p.m. So Aggies, bring in your festive Christmas pajamas, and don't forget to fill the night with jolly holiday spirits. Whew, all of this talk about Christmas seems to be bringing in some of that cold Christmas winter weather. It sure does, and I'm hoping that we finally have a white Christmas. <laughs> well, you know, with North Carolina weather, you just never know. Let's see what meteorologist Grant Coleman says is coming our way in this coming week's forecast. Well, we're not anticipating snow quite yet, but we will have some precipitation this weekend. I'm meteorologist Grant Coleman, giving you a look at your forecast for the weekend as well as going to next week. Now, today, conditions aren't quite in that rainy stage yet. We are having scattered showers most of the day, but that rain will make its way through and get uh, more prominent going into the weekend uh, as we get into the weekend. Now, continuing into the weekend said it three times in a row just to make sure you know that that rain is coming in for Saturday, Sunday and Monday. You can see there we have 73% chance on Saturday, 84 on Sunday and then just scattered showers on Monday as that front moves on through. Temperatures are going to be dipping back down on next week, getting into the upper 50s for your highs and lower 30s and upper 20s for your nighttime lows. So you're going to want to make sure you have it on a jacket as you go out and about after the sun goes down and Actually, this is going to be my last weather cast here with Aggie News. I want to say thank you to everyone who's been a big part of it. Thank you especially to Ms. Caroline Jones, Mr. Ed Moy for being able to integrate this whole thing in such a smooth way and get a bit of a broadcast meteorology program started. Uh, pass, I'm going to be passing the baton off to Dana Wilson. She's not here right now, but that will be her role going into next semester. Uh, I want to thank everybody who's watched and supported thus far, and I'll be in, uh, in Virginia next semester. So I'm going to be teasing to what's happening there later on. And now over to Koa Adams with your entertainment news. Gear up and get ready to fill the seats of Corbett Sports Center. I'm Carolyn Adams with your entertainment news today. Come out this Saturday, December 2nd at 2 p.m. to cheer on your fellow Aggies as they face against Citadel. Put on your best 90s and 2000s themed outfit and prepare to rep your favorite decade. Be sure to grab your tickets today by logging into your student hub account and be sure to check out the clear bag policy. Let's show the men's basketball team what true Aggie pride looks like. The Blue and Gold Marching Machine will make its way to Los Angeles, California to perform in the annual Tournament of Roses Parade. They are asking for donations and fundraising to help aid them on this journey cross country. Take a look. Hello, I'm Alex Agajani. I will be the president of the Pasadena Tournament of Roses Association for the January 1st, 2024 Rose Parade presented by Honda. Based on your musicianship, showmanship, and amazing talent, I would like to invite you to march in the 135th Rose Parade on January 1st, 2024. Congratulations 
to the Blue and Gold Marching Machine of North Carolina A&T University. On behalf of our 935 volunteer members, welcome to the Tournament of Roses family. To support this amazing organization, text BGMM to 41444. This past Saturday, Beyonce, known as Queen Bee, graced the red carpet with a new look for her Renaissance movie premiere. And you know her support system came in deep to show their love and support for the queen. Celebrities such as Kelly Rowland, Michelle Williams, Kris Jenner, Tyler Perry, and many more showed up and showed out for this star-studded event. Beyonce received some backlash after her red carpet look was posted to Instagram. Comments were made that it seemed that she had bleached her skin in efforts for a lighter skin complexion. Beyonce was sure to shut down naysayers and responded to the negativity with, I have nothing to prove to anyone at this point. The Renaissance film will hit theaters December 2nd. Make sure you grab a ticket as they are selling out fast. We're only a couple days away. The annual Soul Train Awards took place November 26, 2023, with actress, singer, and television personality Kiki Palmer as the host. It was announced that she would be hosting this year's show admit a custody battle with her former partner, Darius Jackson. Many people were excited to hear the good news after hearing what she had been through this past year. And of course, Kiki did not disappoint. She surprised viewers with five dress changes and even performed an emotional breakup song. Palmer didn't let her personal circumstances stand in the way of an amazing show and performance. It seems like we may have a new king of pop. According to Forbes magazine, in their latest issue, they named Latin American pop artist Bad Bunny as the king of pop. Bad Bunny has risen to the top as one of the largest pop stars in the Latin American world and has sold over 76.6 records over the course of seven years. Michael Jackson's fans were enraged to hear this as they stayed loyal to the late pop king. It has always been said that Michael was the king of pop, with selling over one billion records in his time. His fans feel that no one will ever take that title. Following this short break, Colin Avery has more on national and local sports, followed by a very important message. Being a champion requires more than just strength and training. It's a mindset you can be the very best. At North Carolina A&T, we applaud our Olympian medalists and members of the United States, Mexico, and Liberia national teams. Watching Trevor Stewart and Randall Ross Jr. make history in Tokyo were moments we'll never forget. We also applaud the 13,000 Aggies who were champions in so many other ways, from creating self-driving automobiles, to landing nationally competitive scholarships, to changing the face of STEM careers across America. It's often said at A&T that Aggies do. Well, don't think for a second that Aggie champions are ever done. North Carolina A&T, home of champions. Thanks, Carly. On today's sports news and updates, we will highlight how our women's basketball team started off their campaign with some big wins, while the men are still looking for that first win. Also, the women's bowling team continued to showcase their dominance after an impressive win on a pursuit of a national championship. I'm Colin Avery, and this is this week's sports news and updates. The Carolina Panthers fired head coach Frank Wright after a 1-10 start and one of the worst offenses in the league. The coaching search continues again for the Panthers. This is starting to seem like a Ferris wheel at this point for the organization. With the next hire, it will be the seventh head coach for the Panthers since 2018, the most in the NFL in that span. At the collegiate level, Duke's head coach Mike Elko took the job at Texas A&M. Elko led the Blue Devils to a 9-4 record in 2020, their best record since 2014. This year, they finished the regular season at 7-5. 
The ladies Aggies currently sit at 3-3 three three with a big win over ACC opponent Wake Forest. They have dropped their last two games by narrow margins, but their next game, it gets even tougher. They take on the Louisville Cardinals this Sunday at noon in Louisville. The next home game for the ladies is against Mercer University Saturday, December 9th at 2 p.m. On the other hand, on the other hand, our men's basketball team is struggling in the new season. They started their season 0-6, and all of their losses have been by double digits. Their next opponent on the schedule is the Citadel. Tip-off will be this Saturday at Club Corbett at 2 p.m. On December 12th, our biggest rival is coming into, into Corbett, the North Carolina Central Eagles. This game tips off at 7 p.m. If you're in town for Christmas break, let's cheer on our fellow Aggies. One sport the Aggies are dominating in is women's bowling. Our women bowling team is rolling through their season. They keep stacking up weekly MEAC honors, and recently they knocked off the number one team in the country, the Vanderbilt Commodores. In the Hawk Classic hosted by Maryland Eastern Shore, our Aggies finished their weekend with a record of 10-3, finished fifth in the tournament, and with their fall season coming to an end, they finished with an impressive 37-10 record, beating 11th ranked teams in, while doing it. The tremendous women bowling team continued their season January 19th at Sacred Heart University in the SHU Northeast Classic. With winning in mind, I'd like to ask my co-anchors to join me for a moment. My co-anchor and I would like to send you all with a special message to end the semester. Hello again, Aggies. We would like to take this moment to express our sincerest gratitude to you all. Today will be our last show produced in this semester. We have all enjoyed bringing you all the latest and most relevant campus and local news. We greatly appreciate the support from our advisors, our Aggie news crew, as well as our fellow Aggies. On our behalf and our co-anchor, Elena White, in her absence, stepping into this opportunity, we never knew that reporting and anchoring for a student organization would be so much work, yet so fulfilling and rewarding. With this being the last show of the fall semester, we hope you stick around to witness the exponential growth of Aggie News. As we continue to bring you the most latest and most relevant news, signing off, I'm Carolyn Adams. I'm Kayla Hare. I'm Colin Avery. And I'm Ashton Griffin. I'm Grant Coleman. Can I get some Aggie Pride? Aggie Pride! Aggie Pride.